According to the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, there are approximately 90,000 missing persons in the United States at every, any given time. With the advancement of modern detective work and advanced scientific methods, such as genealogy testing, the vast majority of missing person cases end up being solved today. Even so, sometimes investigators just aren't able to provide enough conclusive evidence to put the pieces together on some of these cases, and they go unsolved. There have been some devastating, very suspicious missing persons cases in recent times that definitely fall into this category. Throughout history, though, all around the world, certain missing person cases have left investigators and families struggling to find answers. When there is little evidence to no evidence and no eyewitnesses, missing persons cases tragically end up being closed and unsolved. Come with us as we walk through some of the most puzzling and tragic missing persons cases throughout history all around the globe. Some of the kidnappers on this list were brought to justice, and some remain an unsolved mystery and serve as warning stories to the rest of us. Today we're going to look at 15 heartbreaking kidnapping stories that really did mess us up. Number 15. Trisha Kellett. Can you imagine seeing a child get pulled into a car in the middle of the day? It would probably take you a moment to realize what you had actually witnessed. Most of us, though, probably tell ourselves that of course we would react quickly and do whatever we could to stop an abduction. So it may come as a shock to you that some people did not do just that. Trisha Kellett lived in Chicago with her mother and stepfather. It was the year of 1982 and Trisha went to go play with her friends after school on the streets of her neighborhood, something most of us have done as kids. Witnesses reported seeing Trisha talking to an unidentified male, who then pulled her into his car. Why witnesses did not interfere is not clear, and Trisha has never been found. Number 14, The Lion Sisters. The Lion Sisters are the source of one of the biggest missing persons cases in Washington, D.C. They went missing from a shopping mall in 1975 and remained missing. The sisters left their home for the nearby mall to go look at the Easter exhibitions. They left between 11 a.m. and noon. Their mother instructed them to return home by 4 p.m. When the girls did not come home by 7, the authorities were notified. Their brother says that he saw his sisters eating at the Orange Bowl in the mall around 2 p.m. And a neighborhood friend said that they saw the two girls walking on a street near the mall around 2.30. This would be the last time someone saw the girls. It is one of the highest profile cold cases to this day. Number 13, Morgan Nick. A Little League baseball game is a situation where most parents feel their children are safe. There is a large amount of people and lots of eagle-eyed parents around. It would seem crazy to try and take a child from a busy game like that, but it has happened. In 1995, six-year-old Morgan and her mother Colleen went to their local Little League baseball game in Alma, Arkansas around 10.30. Colleen says that Morgan asked her if she could go catch some fireflies with her friends, but she would remain close by and be with a bunch of other kids. Her mother was apprehensive but relented. Her friends say they saw Morgan getting sand out of her shoes around 10.45. They also claim that they saw Morgan talking to a creepy man. 
Morgan has not been found and her mother Colleen actually created the Morgan Nick Foundation, which is dedicated to helping parents find their missing children. Number 12. Janelle Matthews Our homes are where we feel safe, where we escape to for comfort and get away from everything else. The outside world is not supposed to be able to touch you while you're in your own home. Perhaps some of the most unsettling kidnapping cases are when someone is taken from their bedrooms. Like in the case of Janelle Matthews. 12 year old Janelle lived in Colorado with her adoptive parents. On the night of December 20th, 1984, she was dropped off at her home by her family friend around 8.15. A friend of the family called around 8.30 p.m. and spoke to her, and this would be the last time anyone would hear from Janelle. When her father arrived home by 9.30, he found the garage door open and no Janelle. Her birth mother was a person of interest in the case, but has been totally absolved of any suspicion. Her adoptive parents and her birth mother believe that she's deceased, and they held a memorial for her. Number 11. Mary Lozano Can you imagine putting your children to bed, and when you go to check on them again, one is missing? From right under your own roof, where you believe that they are the safest. That is a disturbing thought. Mary Lozano was four years old when she was abducted while she slept in the same room as her brother's. Her parents and aunt were sleeping in the rooms nearby, and they claimed that they did not hear Mary cry out in the night. A neighbor who was arriving home late at 3 a.m. claims he saw a man standing in front of the sliding glass doors of the family's home. The man ran off when he noticed the neighbor, who then went to bed. Law enforcement believes that this man is responsible for taking Mary Lozano, who is missing to this day. Number 10. Chiron Horman Other than their own home, what is the second safest place you feel for a child? Probably their school where they're under the watchful eye of adults, parents, and other adults that trust the surround by the other children. The above photo is the last photo taken of seven-year-old Chiron, which happened to be the morning of his disappearance. His school was having a science fair, which Chiron was very excited about. His stepmother, Terry Horman, was the one that took the photo and brought Chiron to school, and she remained during the science fair. She claims that when she left around 8.45 a.m. and watched Chiron walk down the hall to his first class, but we know that Chiron never actually reached his first class. His dad and sister waited for him at the bus stop, but the driver told them that Chiron never got on. And when they called the school, they said he'd been marked absent for the day. Chiron has been missing for over seven years now. Number 9. Michaela Joy Garrett this truly seems to be a horrific case of a little girl being in a bad spot at the worst time. In 1988, Michaela was nine years old when she was abducted from a parking lot in front of a grocery store in broad daylight. Her and her friend had left their homes with their scooters around 10 a.m. that day, and Michaela is estimated to have been taken by 10.15. The girls left their scooters outside the store while they went in. When they left, they started to walk home before realizing they forgot their scooters and turned back around. According to Michaela's friend, when they got back to the parking lot, Michaela's scooter was not in the spot they left it, but moved closer to a van. Michaela went to grab her scooter and a male came out of the van and lifted her inside. Her friend ran inside the grocery store to get help, but it was too late. 
Michaela and her kidnapper were already gone, and the case remains unsolved. Number 8. An entire school bus carrying 26 children and their bus driver are kidnapped in Chochilla, California. This is a true case of reality being stranger than fiction. In 1975, an entire school bus carrying 26 children between the ages of 5 and 14 and their school bus driver were kidnapped. The bus was stopped by armed men on the road around 4 p.m. after the school day. The kidnappers hid the bus and then drove all 26 children and the bus driver to a quarry where they had prepared a moving box to store them all in. Inside were a few dirty mattresses, some food and water. The children and the bus driver stacked the mattresses until they were able to reach the ceiling and they actually succeeded in opening it and getting out. And they simply walked to the guard station at the quarry. They had been missing for around 16 hours. The kidnappers wanted to ask for a ransom, but it was safe to say they were not very good at kidnapping and their plans fell through. Richard Schoenfeld, James Schoenfeld, and Frederick Woods were all found guilty of the kidnapping and sentenced to life in prison. Number 7. Polly Class Polly Class was spending her night in the way most 12-year-olds love to. A slumber party with two of her closest friends at her mother's house in Petaluma, California. The three girls were sleeping in Polly's room when a man came in carrying a knife. This man would be later identified as Richard Allen Davis. The three girls woke up and he tied Polly's two friends and put pillowcases over their heads. He also told them to count to a thousand. Davis then left the house, taking Polly with him. For the next two months, over 4,000 people aided in the search of Polly. Davis was eventually arrested by police on suspicion of being responsible for the kidnapping. He confessed to the crime and admitted that he had strangled Polly to death. He led authorities to her body, which was located about 20 miles away from where people were searching. Number 6. Molly Bish Molly Bish is the subject of the largest search in the state of Massachusetts. She lived in Warren and worked as a lifeguard at the Commons Pond in the town. Her mother dropped her off on the morning of her disappearance, June 26, 2000, which was part of their normal routine. Her mother says that there was a suspicious man parked in the parking lot but did not really think about him until Molly disappeared. Her mother was the last person to see Molly. Police called the family that night and said that Molly had not been at work all day, but her belongings were found at the pool. The remains of Molly's body were found in 2003 in Hampton County, which is the county over from Warren. The person responsible for her kidnapping and murder was never found. Number 5. Elizabeth Fritzel Headlines around the world exploded with this case when it came to light in 2008. Elizabeth Fritzel lived in Amstetten, Austria with her parents when she was kidnapped at the age of 18. Her kidnapper was her father, Joseph Fritzel. Apparently, when Joseph tricked his daughter into the secret basement and ended up keeping her there for 24 years while he lived upstairs with her mother, whom he had told their daughter ran away and joined a cult. He abused his daughter in a horrific way throughout those 24 years. And this eventually culminated to her having seven children with her father. He actually took three of the children and raised them upstairs, telling his wife that they were foundlings. One child did not make it much longer after birth, and the other three remained in prison with their mother. 
Their release came about because the oldest daughter, granddaughter in captivity fell very ill and Joseph agreed to take her to the hospital. He could not keep his story together about the circumstances and hospital staff found that the girl's DNA matched Elizabeth Fritz who had apparently been missing for years. Elizabeth begged for her father to be allowed to go see her daughter and he finally brought her and the two remaining children upstairs and the story broke about what he had done. Number 4. Angela Hammond Angela Hammond was four months pregnant when she was kidnapped. Tragically, her fiancé and baby's father was on the phone with her when she was taken. It was 1991 and she was 20 years old looking forward to her future with her baby and her fiancé. Angela was on the payphone with her fiancé and she told Rob that a pickup truck had pulled up next to her. The next thing Rob heard was Angela screaming. He quickly jumped in his car and drove to the area he knew her to be and he actually saw the truck drive past him and could hear Angela screaming in the car. Can you imagine living with that? Angela has never been found, but there have been some theories that she was a victim of Kenneth McDuff, who was a serial killer that was active in the area when she was taken during that time. Number 3. Amy Bradley if you've ever been on a luxury cruise ship, you know that there is nothing short of a small city. And like any city, it's easy to go missing even if you were out in the middle of the ocean. In 1998, 23-year-old Amy Bradley and her family had won tickets to go on a Royal Caribbean cruise together. While the ship was en route to Venezuela, Amy went missing during the night and has never been seen again. The night she went missing, she was drinking and dancing and a member of the ship's band said that he last saw her at 1 a.m. Her father claims he saw Amy sleeping on their balcony between 5.15 and 5.30 early that morning. When he went to go check on her again at 6, Amy was gone. Some people believe that Amy fell over the railings into the ocean, and others think she was kidnapped by human traffickers. There have been a number of reported sightings of her, and an American Navy member claims that he saw her at a brothel, and she did in fact identify herself as Amy Bradley and ask for help. The search for Amy and the mystery of what really happened continues. Number 2. Natasha Campush when someone goes missing, there is always a hope, especially for their loved ones, that they are somewhere out there still alive. This is only somewhat comforting, though, because if they are alive, it would mean that someone is most likely keeping them against their will. This is what happened in the case of Natasha. She was 10 years old when she was kidnapped by Wolfgang Prickelopil on her way to school in 1998 and she remained his prisoner for eight years until she was able to escape. Prickolopil held her in a cellar beneath his garage. She had written a book about her eight-year ordeal and subsequently escaped, and today she is a spokesperson for PETA. Number 1. Dorothy Jane Scott Dorothy had been receiving calls from an unknown male for months before she was abducted in 1980. The male caller would sometimes be threatening and claim that he would get her alone and cut her into little pieces. Other times he would act totally in love with her. She told her friends and family that she recognized the voice of the man, but not sure who he was. One time he called her and told her to go look at what he had left for her outside. When Dorothy went outside, she found a dead rose on her car's windshield. The day she went missing, May 28, 1980, 
She had driven two co-workers to her local hospital because one had been bitten by a spider. When they were done at the hospital, Dorothy said she would go get her car and pick them up in front of the hospital's entrance. Her two co-workers saw her car coming around the corner, but it kept driving past them. Because of the car's headlights, they were not able to see if there was anyone else besides Dorothy in the car. When she went missing, her mother began to receive taunting phone calls every week about Dorothy. The week before her body was found, her mother received one last phone call, where the caller simply asked, Is Dorothy home? Thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoy what I do, please click like and subscribe to the channel, share the video around, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. If you have any information on any of these cases, please get in touch with your local law enforcement agencies and they can set you to where you need to be going. But anyways, I've been Just Plain Creepy. Have yourself a great one and I'll see you in the next video.